I got this oscilloscope a few weeks back um, and it was sold as having a problem with the second channel, some weirdness going on. <laughs> so I, I took my chances and got this oscilloscope. All the knobs are still there, which is a good thing. But you, you can clearly see some, some yellowing. But now let's power this thing up and see what is going on. Okay, we got a trace. Oh, there was some glitch. I wonder where this came from. Okay, the uh, horizontal position control does work. Let's use a DC coupling. This probe is not compensated yet, so I would expect some issues there. Okay. Okay, so this thing actually does trigger positive, negative. Yeah, this works just fine. Horizontal position. Attenuation seems to generally work. I, I could go a little bit more in, in depth, but I had a quick look before, so um, the first channel seems to be absolutely fine. The second channel. There are problems. Okay, so I have to rotate the position knob clockwise to its maximum in order to to actually see it uh, see the line the trace roughly in the middle of the screen so something is going on there now i will dc couple the signal i'm at 0.1 volts per division and the calibration output is at 300 millivolts so there's definitely something something wrong with the amplitude of the signal Let's try invert, okay. With invert, the trace cannot be seen at all. Also, if I have a close look, now I have one and a half divisions. I would expect uh, twice, twice that, because um, 300 millivolts from, from the calibrator, 0.1 volts per division. And I probably get this with a uh, first channel. This is roughly um, three um, divisions. Yeah, so it's half, exactly half the amplitude that I would expect. It seems like um, the attenuator actually works. Triggering system seems also to be uh, fine. And um, off the camera, I tested this uh, scope a little bit more in depth. So the second channel has a problem. Also the times 10 light doesn't really work. If I was to use a um, times 10 probe with this pin, then I would expect to uh, that the um, times one light over here switches off and the times 10 light would switch on. And I can uh, simulate this by attaching a resistor from, from this outer ring to the ground of this BNC connector. The, the times 10 light should light up. So let's try this out. So if I was to connect, now I'm at um, channel one. Yep. And now I will try this with channel two. Aha. Uh -huh. So the light switches off, but the times 10 light doesn't um, light up. And here it is without 
its case. And now a short message from my sponsor. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, what I'm not kidding about, here, uh, here you can clearly see a warning sign and it warns you about lethal voltages inside this unit. So if you don't know what you're doing, just don't do it. This device could easily kill you. So um, I took a quick look inside of this unit and I didn't find many obvious problems. One problem though is a tantalum capacitor on this horizontal board down here, which has a slight discoloration. And um, I can show you this um, discoloration briefly. However, I will change this capacitor at some point, but the discoloration is not that bad that I want to change this immediately. I just want to fix the second channel first. And if this works okay, then I proceed with everything else. But generally speaking, you would do a um, voltage rail check anyways. So if, if there is a huge problem, I would probably see it. And um, yeah, this is why I should be good with this approach. And by the way, this is the uh, vertical board. Here are two attenuators with their boards, individual boards. And um, as we could see, the attenuators are working just fine. So I wouldn't expect any major problem in those attenuators. So I would expect actually that the problem is starting from here and somewhere to, I don't know, right around here. So this is where we will take a closer look at. And what is nice about this particular problem, you have two channels and one is working, the other isn't. So you can actually compare those two channels. So I started to measure all the DC voltages as recommended in the uh, service manual. Starting with this attenuator over here and work my way back over here. And what I found was that um, up to this point, uh, where it um, where the signal actually goes into the um, switching logic, everything seems to be fine. So I believe the error has to be somewhere in the switching logic. Those transistors were fine, um, and uh, yeah, so I measured those diodes. And sure enough, this diode over here seems to have a problem. If I measure this diode, it has a forward voltage of roughly 0.55 volts, whereas all those other diodes, Schottky diodes pretty much, um, have a forward voltage of 0.35, something like this. So yeah, I wasn't still 100% sure that this is the only fault. However, I think it is a very good starting point. What I did next is to lift one pin of this diode and uh, measure it out of circuit. It's open. So what I will do is replace this diode because I don't have an exact replacement for this diode. I will use just a regular Schottky diode, ABAT41. So just a quick test. I sold this um, BAT41 diode on, on top of this open one. Uh, yeah, I probably should just replace it, but yeah, it's just a test because I will order um, a um, different diode if, if everything works just fine. Yeah, and we will now see whether or not something blows up. Okay. Now have a look. Channel 2. Okay, let's turn up the intensity a little bit. Okay, the positional. Okay. 
Okay, maybe it's... Oh! Okay. And this was the problem, this diode. I bet the calibration is off by quite a bit, but it seems to work. Awesome. <laughs>